I've been making fonts with AI for a few months now. It's a new hobby of mine, but are they any good? I'm going to show you and you'll be the judge. All right, so I start off by coming to ChatGPT. I just type in a playful, hand-drawn, bold font, letters A through Z, all black, flat letters, white background. Okay, so I could work with that. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to tell it, great job. Now give me the lowercase letters in the exact same style. All right, we could finish this, uh, this Y. We can probably just draw it in. Looks good enough to me. Number zero through nine and the special characters all right boom and that's it for creating them you saw how easy it was it kind of you know sometimes you got to get it to do it twice and you got to make sure that none of the letters are touching each other because uh it's going to make it very easy to separate i'm gonna jump into illustrator show you the next step all right so you open up illustrator now honestly i don't really use illustrator that much so I, there's a lot of things i don't know about it so if there's something i'm not doing right let me know so I'm going to take the files that we made and just import them right here. It doesn't matter what size canvas or anything because we're not going to be using any of the canvas functions or anything. All right. So what we're doing is we got these three images here. And what we're going to do is one by one image trace. But we're going to make sure it's black and white logo. All right. So black and white logo image trace. Then you hit expand. And then you're going to do the same for the other two image trace then expand then we're going to get our other mouse here and we're just going to drag the white parts out all right that gets rid of that then we're going to hit the letter y on the keyboard and that's going to give us our magic wand we're going to select the white it's going to select all the white everywhere and we're going to hit delete again so we're going to right click and go to ungroup all right so certain things have to be regrouped. We want to make sure that anything that has two sections in one letter or character are grouped together. So I'm going to get my Pathfinder. I'm going to select my I, and I'm going to merge that first and foremost. Okay, I'm going to select my J, and I'm going to merge that. And I think that's it for our letters. And then over here, we got to do that with all the special characters. That's it in this one. What we're going to do is we got to put all the letters in a long line. So the capital letters got to be all in one long line together. And that's when I come down here and I just bring them all next to each other like this. OK, we don't need two X's, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And then YZ. So what I'm going to do here also to get all these the same size, one thing that I like to do make them all the same height. Now, I don't know how to do this in Illustrator, so I have what's called a script, and I'm gonna use a script to do this, and I'm gonna put the script in the, um, along with uh, the font files and all the free files, so you gotta sign up for the email list to get it, but you can get the script, I'm gonna put it in there. Um, and in this case, I gotta load the script, resize to size, all right? So I double click on that, and it opens this up. Basically, I'm gonna keep everything scaling side height, but then I wanna, make it exactly 200 um, uniform scaling option. So it scales everything uniformly um, with the center being the reference point. So now all the letters will be roughly the same height. Hit OK. Then we're going to align them bottom first. And now, now that these are done, uh, what I'm going to do is open up Font Self. So Font Self is this amazing software that uh, makes it very easy to make fonts on Illustrator. So now that I have all 26 letters, so now all I have to do is click this capital uppercase alphabet left to right, and it's gonna automatically set them in. Watch this. Boom, done. They are all now in the program, uh, automatically placed where they belong for each you know, character glyph. Look at this at how cool this is we are making our own font right but we don't have any other characters so we need all the other characters too now so that was pretty easy to do i'm gonna go ahead and just move this out of the way because we're not done we might need it after right we're gonna just put that aside because we're gonna wait at the very end we're gonna review and make sure that everything is the way it needs to be so now we're gonna take the lowercase letters Right now, I feel like these are smaller. I'm going to make them all bigger together. 
Um, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to highlight all of these. And then we're going to hit the small letters, lowercase alphabet, A through Z, 25 instead of 26. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Oh, okay, missing the L. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this into the L. And that's going to be the L. It's all highlighted, so we're going to click this little A through Z. And now all the lowercase ones are there as well. All right, now we're going to get back to this to revise, but first we're going to get everything we want in there. All right, so we're going to put this underneath. Now we're going to put our numbers. Now we're going to hit, because all the numbers are highlighted, we're just going to hit the zero through nine. It's going to check them to make sure there's nine of them and already, boom, just automatically imported them. As I can already see, the numbers are slightly smaller than the letters. So I want to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them a little bit, a little bit bigger like that and then do it again. Zero through nine. And then I'm going to hit apply for remaining glyphs and replace. And as you can see, they're all a little bigger now. See, now that's the thing in Illustrator. You have to make all the changes in Illustrator before you move it in. You can't make many changes to the actual letters and glyphs once they're in there. So you make the changes in Illustrator and then import them. All right. This is a minimal program. Font Self is not designed to be this robust font program. It's designed to be like a quick, not worry about too many things type of program. Um, and it's extremely amazing at that. Now we have our special characters. So this one I want to duplicate. I think the question mark is going to get a little bigger, and that's good. So for these, we're going to put into batch, importing. So it's going to import them. And for these, we actually have to tell it what each one is. It's not going to do these one automatic. But look, it's easy. As soon as you hit the button, boom, you click on the next one. And it automatically moves it to wherever uh, it was supposed to go, right? So I'm giving it all of the characters. And we're going to revise later. So if you see any mistakes, don't worry. We're going to get back to that. All right. Now, I don't even know how to do this degree symbol. So I'm going to get rid of it for now, too. Delete. All right. So now there's something called kerning and spacing. And these are complicated things you got to do when it comes to making fonts. You got to tell the space between every letter's relationship with every other letter. It's crazy how much work it is. But here they got something called smart. You hit the smart and it will automatically do smart space and current. So all that work that takes hours to do, this will do it for you. I'm sure it's not perfect, but it's better than sitting there for five hours trying to do it all yourself. So you click on smart space and current. And it's going to do everything and boom, it's done. So now what we do is we come up here and we start typing to see how everything looks. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So here's one thing, right? So the, the period looks like it's too high, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Here's the period. I double click. And here's what's cool about this. You see this line here? This shows you where the bottom is supposed to be of the font. So this is clearly way higher than the line. And then you can see it in real time move up here. So look, if I move it up, you see it moves up here. I move it down to the line where it belongs and we're in business. All right. And I double click anywhere. It brings me back to this whole section right here. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. We're going to look and find them by just typing here until we see mistakes. So now I'm going to do the lowercase, um, the quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog. I feel like that letter E is a little too high. So let me bring that E down. I'm going to double click on the E. And as you can see, it's not even touching the, that, that line. So I'm going to bring it. And when you got curves, they usually go a little over the line. So the E should go a little bit over the bottom. And as you can see now here, it looks way better, right? It looks way better there. Um, The C too, now that I look at it, you see that C? The letter C looks like it could definitely come. Look how high it is to that line. It definitely should come down a little bit, right? The O, and now it looks way better. Um, maybe the B, I feel like that small B, yeah, it could come down a little bit here. There we go. Um, the D, look at that D and that O and that G. All, all of them might need help. Same way the B did. Now that looks better. That G is definitely 
out of pocket, there I think it looks better. The U, you see, is that U? Yeah, that U definitely wants to come down a little bit. And does that J want to come up? Let's look at this J. I feel like it could come up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's better there. That V looks like it's just big. So let's bring it down because that V has a little bit of, yeah. I'm really, oh, the apostrophe. We don't even have an apostrophe. All right, so when you see these weird characters, it's because we don't actually have an apostrophe. So what I'm going to do is actually use it. Where's the comma? I guess they didn't. we didn't make an apostrophe. Okay, bring it down to batch. It's importing it. So this is going to be our apostrophe. See, so now we have it up here, and we're going to put apostrophe. And now we know what that is. So now the apostrophe is where it belongs. I'm happy with the way this is coming out. Hmm, maybe that I and that S. Yeah. Let me see what's up with that I. Yeah, that I definitely wants to come down and touch this line. There you go. Yeah, now everything definitely looks better. The, even the S looks more, you know, the S isn't perfect, but it's playful and that's good. It has a playful style to it. You know, it could probably be smaller, but no, I think that that's how we're going to do it. What's up with this H? Let me just make sure H it could come down a tad bit. Okay, I'm happy this is coming out. Okay, that M. What's up with that M? Yeah, that M looks like it definitely wants to come and touch the ground a little bit. Done. That N too. A lot of these, right? Let that N touch the ground. It's coming out little by little. It's looking, hmm, that L. Yeah, that L wants to come touch the ground. There we go. I feel like our apostrophe needs to come down too. Yeah, let's get it more in tune. It's now. Oh, is that a comma? <laughs> I mean, our... Uh, yeah, our comma, our comma's no good. Ooh, comma, you way high. You crazy, comma. You crazy. Okay. Now, it's looking better. Everything is where it is supposed to be, it seems. Okay, cool. Can't be mad at this. This is this is looking good. Um yeah, how about numbers? How about the... Oh, wait, wait, our A. Ooh, our later. How about the numbers? Numbers and other things. Okay, yeah, that A definitely, definitely, definitely got to come down. Woo! Okay. Much gooder. Much gooder. All right, that S. Hmm. Nah, that's not going to come down. The S is where it needs to be. Way down. Right? Is it the, Does the G need to come up? Yeah. I think the G looks better up there. All right, y'all. I think this is good to go. Numbers are looking good. Yo, this is good to go. What we're going to do now is just hit that save button, right? What, what, what's a cool font name? This is a playful hand drawn. We're going to do playful hands. The playful hands elegant font. What up? So what it's going to do, it's going to save an OTF file, right? Save. And we're done. Now, look at our font file. Look how beautiful. Nice, awesome font. Pretty easy to make, right? Let's install it. Double click. Playful Hands Regular. PT. Adobe Illustrator. And Font Self. And there it is, y'all. Now, this is Font Self. I don't, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. There's no affiliate links. They don't do that. I just think that they're really, really great. You got the iPad version, which gives you even more control. You could actually edit them right on your iPad, right? And then you have the desktop version, which is uh, 40 bucks pretty much for the Illustrator version. They have a Photoshop version that lets you make color fonts. Those are called SVG fonts that don't really work on everything, So, but they will work on Photoshop. So if you want to make different colors and stuff, you could do that on the Photoshop version. But what I just showed you was just this AI version, 39 bucks. I know that, you know, there's a lot of things with subscriptions, $39 to have this for the rest of your life. 
I think it's pretty good price in my opinion. So obviously I have to give something away, right? I made a bunch of these Basquiat style paintings a while ago, really never got around to using this stuff. So I'm going to, um, you know, give them to y'all, see if y'all could do something creative with them. These are pretty cool. They, uh, you know, all have that famous artist Basquiat style to them and they just could make cool little posters, you know, um, cell phone cases all over prints, I think could do good. You know, if you print it on something already white, then um, it works out. I, I wouldn't attempt to take the background off of these. These do not work with background removers. They're a little too wild, but they do work on white backgrounds, right? So if you have something with a white background, this works perfectly on there. You could just print it as is and, you know, it'll, it'll uh, fit that. So I think that there's a lot of cool stuff. You know, the monkey with the glasses looks real cool. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. Look, we got a hamster with glasses, uh, ladybugs. I mean, we got all kinds of weird animals and, and lobsters with three arms. So, you know, take a look at it because it's an art thing. You, you don't really, there's not really mistakes because it's art. So um, I think this is just fun. This is a real fun uh, image pack to use. Look at, uh, actually, you know, these raccoons been doing good lately. Look at this one. Uh, look at all these raccoons. These, you probably do something cool with these raccoons because um, they're pretty hot item right now. And look, even wolves with glasses. I think this is real fun. I think y'all could actually find something to do with this. I'll leave it up to y'all to get creative with this and have a, you know, see if maybe you can make some money with it. Who knows? And then I have 200 more animal paintings that are not Basquiat style, but I had these laying around too. And so there's 200 of these to add to the 600 other ones. So in total, that's about 800 images. If you uh, haven't signed up for the email list, sign up. Never any spam, only free stuff. If you've already signed up, check your inbox. You should have these already. So if y'all got any value, please like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next one.